Welcome to Ronnie's Garage. Uh, we are holding Rolls Royce Owners Club of Southern California's uh, monthly tech meet. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Silver Cloud 3. We're going to be resealing the steering ram up at the front and we'll be looking the car over for numerous other leaks that I'm sure we can find. All right, we have a 65 Silver Cloud 3 here that uh, I remember, I forget the exact words, but the customer said it leaks everywhere. Uh, but we're gonna, we're, we're gonna focus on one major leak on this car today, and that's the power steering ram. But what we'll do first is we'll go ahead and look under the car, and I will point out some places of uh, common leakages. So we'll start at the back end, because there's less places to leak. Let's see if you have, no, he does not have, normally, on an older car, you will see fluid here. This is the bottom end of the shock because it'll run down here. So both of his are dry. So that means one of two things. Either they're sealed and they don't leak or there's no fluid in them. <laughs> so normally on a, on a annual maintenance, I have a long checklist that I go through and part of that checklist is checking the fluid levels in the shocks and a lot of times on a silver cloud, I'll have a customer come in, I'll do the service, put fluid in the shocks, I'll note that they were low, and then they'll call me back and say, there's red fluid all over my garage floor, and that's the transmission fluid that I put in the shocks because they didn't leak before because they didn't have fluid. Uh, so make sure you put fluid in them before you, you know, assume that they're fine. So it's bad to drive it without the fluid. What, what's going to happen if I... The car will ride inaccurately. Uh, it'll bounce more. Um, and that switch on the steering column for the rear shocks, that controls the rear shocks. It's got a hard and a soft setting. And a lot of pe people, club members, tell me, well, that, nothing happens when I operate that switch. Well, if there's no fluid in it, then it's not going to work. So that's where I would start. And you can top those off. There's a little fill plug. It's really, see, it's easier to see on this one. You see right there is a fill, there's a little bolt, it's 5 8 head. And there's a crush washer, aluminum or uh, copper under it. You unscrew that and you, you uh, squirt uh, just any kind of automatic transmission fluid. It doesn't, it's, it's not particular. It has to be a real lightweight fluid. And fill it till it, pour, it runs out and then, uh, then put the plug back in and then see what happens. Uh, if your switch starts working again, then that's great. There's other problems. It could be electrical, but um, if it takes a lot of fluid. They won't hold, but maybe a quarter to a half a pint, but or not even that much. But uh, if you seem to have to add a lot of fluid, then watch out for leaks afterwards. Another common place, which this one's not too bad. You see, it's kind of damp under here. Uh, the differential, it has little weep holes here on each side. They're little holes that go up in there, and inside is a seal that goes around the, the axle shaft, and that holds differential fluid in. Those go bad quite often. So you'll see, when they're leaking real bad, you'll see a trail of a nice clean spot here with oil coming down. And also up front, they have a felt seal in there that uh, if you see fluid running down this way, then that's, that's a bad sign also. And on the differential, it's, it's pretty critical, the fluid level. It doesn't hold but a pint and a half. You go to the Silver Shadow and it holds four plus pints. So if you only have a little bit of fluid in there and you run it low, you can burn that up and that's an expensive fix. Very expensive fix. All right, we'll move up the, towards the front of the car. We'll come up to the transmission. And uh, I already said this once this morning, but you say, oh, it's got transmission. Look, it just dripped oh, in front of us. It's raining under here. But if you look at the fluid, well, you can't with the black gloves. If you look down here, that is engine oil. That is not transmission fluid. So that means you've got a leak higher up somewhere uh, coming from the engine. One thing I want to, and, and the reason I said that is most people will lift the car up, on inexperienced people, and they say, oh, it's leaking right there, because that's where the fluid is. Anybody ever have a roof leak at their home? The leak is never where the fluid comes out. It's always, you know, way off. Mm -hmm. So that's that's an important thing to worry about. Now, here's a real common area of leak. This is this is like a little. This is a sending unit for the oil pan. Well, what the heck is that for? That has like a gas gauge. It has a little float in there with an arm. And on these cars, 
The fuel gauge doubles as an oil level gauge. You have a test button, you can press that test button and it, it, it connects to this. And on your fuel gauge it'll have, it says a minimum oil line, it's kind of an orange color, there's a little line. So that's, you don't want it to go below that. I, I, I've never really taken the time to see how many quarts that is, but if it's down to that, and you, and you check with the car not running. You have to turn the key on to do it, but don't start the car. And the reason for that is when the car is running, just like when you use a dipstick, you don't check it when it's running because it's not accurate. All right. So on the transmission, common leaks spots are around the pan gasket. Uh, if you look up here, you have this, this is your uh, gear shift selector linkage plus your throttle linkage. A lot of times there's a seal in there and an O-ring that'll leak out of there. The side cover can leak. Uh, and then this tail housing unit. This is where the rear seal leak uh, is. They'll leak out of there sometime. And when they leak out of here, it's not as much fun because you've got to pull this big unit off and there are a lot of gears and things in there. Uh, another place it can leak is the front of the transmission where you can't see. If, if we want to track this leak, it's kind of tough here because the engine is not flat, it's at a slight angle. So a leak at the front of the engine can actually come all the way back to this point and drip down because it'll follow the block. Uh, this one right here I can see, it looks like it probably has a valve cover leak because it's got oil coming from way up here. If you look under here, Steve, can you see that? See where that drip is there? Yep. And see how this is all clean? That means it's leaking pretty good. It's leaking enough to where it's washed away all the dirt and won't collect there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and <laughs> the silver cloud is hard to see. Why don't you come over on this side? The front of the engine has a big aluminum cover and then it has this little rubber strip that goes in between two halves. That is a real common place to leak on. Did you see that? This, one, this side's not leaking, but if you look on this side and you go up there, you can see it's coming down pretty good. And where is it? Can you point to it again? Uh, it is, the rubber strip is missing on this side. Oh. So what that is, is it's a piece of foam rubber that's stuck between two halves. Almost got you in there. And it sticks out on the ends. Normally you trim it, but not too close, because when it gets older and drier, it shrinks. And if you don't want it to go in, then it'll leak even more. Uh, and here is what we're going to fix on this car today. Up front you have, you can see this car has sat here maybe an hour or so. There's a drip right here. That was not there before. It's power steering fluid or transmission fluid, same kind of fluid. And you can see right here, if you come on this side, Steve, you can see right there. It's, it's dripping right from there. See that? And that is a, a ram which does pushing, basically. So you have a steering box on this, and it has four hoses going to it. It has a high pressure in, it comes from the pump to give you your assist. It has a return to the pump for the fluid that's not being used. And when you're not using the steering, then it just bypasses until it starts to move. Plus, you have two hoses that go to this ram. One side, one hose goes to one side of the ram, and the other side goes to the other side of the ram. So this car has a real steering box, so up in the air, you can turn it, and the wheel's turn and all that. But when it's running and it's on the ground, it uses high-pressure fluid to push from down here one way or the other to give you assist. Uh, and this, a real common cause to make these things leak, and you can see it from over here if you want, Steve, is this is your sway bar, and you can see it's right up against this ram. It's touching it, okay? There should be a gap in there. And what happens is since this thing is hanging down so low in the front, it gets hit, and it bends it, bends this bracket, and that puts pressure on that ram, and it makes it leak. So... You can try taking it loose and straightening it and see if it fixes the leak, but if it's leaking, I always put a new seal in it and then straighten it and make sure we have the proper clearance. Uh, so it's, it's at least straightenable. Well, what happens is you have, once we get it off, you'll, you have a housing with a seal in it and you have a shaft. So it has to go back and forth. And if you're doing this to it, mm -hmm. it's going to leak. 
All right. So now we'll go ahead and take this off. How much of a gap between the sway bar and? You need to see light. So it's not. The sway bar actually comes up a bit when you put it on the ground, but so in other words, when it's when you can see light when it's in the air, then you're good. So as long as it doesn't touch. Yeah, it should not touch. And and this is really stupid where they put this. I, 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 you think of <laughs> how many times your your modern cars you hit that plastic up front just pulling up. And this thing, bam. So, but there are no parts that are missing here that I should have that are protecting this, or? No, there is no protection. This right here, I think, is more for the horns. <laughs> it's loose. Different. Oh, look, who's been working on this thing? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> me being the camera guy. All right, so. This has to come off, this bracket has to come off, I have to disconnect it from the steering linkage, and the hoses come off, and then we'll have that out. So I will go ahead and start doing that. 